And usually, like I said, when I do it at home, I grind, uh, I blend the, the nuts first, the nuts, everything else. I leave out the cilantro and the parsley until the end. But yeah, that's what I usually do. But I, I put in the cilantro first, which is perfect also. It's good. This consistency is good. I eat it like this. It's crunchy. You know, um, the one that you guys are, have, are having, it's a little softer consistency because I blended it longer. So it depends on how long you like. Any other questions? Oh, yes. How about uh, substituting for the salt, dulse or kelp? Oh, I've never tried that. What is it? Kelp? Kelp is seaweed. Seaweed, yeah. Dulse is seaweed. I and I and Dulse and, or kelp. Oh, okay, there's a good substitution, substitution for salt. Kelp or dulse. Yes. Is this a kelp and a sauce? It's a pesto, cilantro pesto. Anybody else? You guys taste the garlic? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> All right, so that's it for me. And Miss Darlene is going to be showing us how to make yummy nacho cheese dip.
it has to be digested. Okay, so we take in, let's say, you know, you eat this apple, you're chewing on this apple, it has to be broken down, okay, it's traveling through the body, and the end product are proteins and amino acids, okay, and they are the building blocks for the body. Now, when we think about brain foods, we we have to, when we think about brain foods, we, when we think about the brain, you think about your um, neurotransmitters, your your dopamine, your serotonin, um, norepinephrine. Those are the chemicals that keep the brain healthy. But the only way we can get that is through our diet. So when we eat, if we're eating junk, putting junk in, we're going to get junk out. So, healthy foods for the brain. Now, I think you're going to love this. How many of you like cashews? Okay, cashews. These are raw cashews. Cashews are full of copper, full of zinc, magnesium. They help to lower the cholesterol level. Okay, they're good for the heart. So cashews, a nice, um, it's nutty, it has a cheesy, sweet taste. So I love cashews. My problem is I eat too many cashews, okay? So I, I go a little overboard. So with this recipe, it calls for one cup. Do you have your, your um, recipes? So you can follow me here. out with my water first. One, it calls for one cup of water and um, one cup of cashews. And you want to make sure that they're raw. You want the raw cashews and you definitely want to rinse them. Okay, make sure you don't have any little um, critters there that shouldn't be. So one cup of cashews. And it also calls for onions. Now, you're not going to put this onion in, but I brought an onion, and Carmina talked about the benefits of onions. They are anti, as she said, everything, antibacteria, antifungal, um, antiviral. Um, onions are excellent. It has been um, used. You know, when you look through the literature, it talks about um, onions being scavengers, scavengers that go in and just pull out, you know, um, the microphages, which are um, scavengers. If you have a foreign agent that comes into your body, you want your immune system to rear up and so onions and also garlic. Um, garlic also antifungal, antibacteria, antiviral. So they just go in and when you have some type of foreign um, body or um, bacteria, it just goes in and it just scoops it up and it just kills it right there on the spot. There are a lot of studies that talk about um, garlic as um, being good for cancer. Um, we know that it's good for the common cold. It builds the immune system. So these are natural um, ingredients in nature that God has put there in order to keep us healthy. So the recipe calls for, as far as onion, I have the onion um, flakes. It calls for two tablespoons. So two tablespoons of onion powder or flakes. And then with the garlic, one tablespoon of garlic. You don't want to get the garlic that has salt, okay, because this is going to be salty enough 
And then salt is not, a lot of salt is not really good for you. We should only have like one teaspoon of salt per day. Most of our foods are full of salt, sodium already. So we don't need that. And cumin. Who's heard of cumin? Okay, it's a spice. You know, it is unbelievable the, the research that they're doing on spices now. This is really, cumin is really good for memory. It's good to aid in digestion, and it really tastes good. It gives it a um, kick. The recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of cumin. I really amped up my kitchen with spices because now that I'm learning about the medicinal usages for these spices, you know, I'm, I'm getting rid of a lot of other things and just replacing it with, with the spices. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper, and I said this a long time ago in um, another presentation, that cayenne pepper it's good for the heart. Now, when patients can, are in the hospital, um, if they're having a heart attack, the doctors and nurses will give them what's called nitroglycerin, and that dilates the um, blood vessels so that the blood can flow through, um, better blood flow. And so, if someone is at home and they're having a heart attack, what you can do is just take one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, put it under their tongue, and it's going to dilate the blood vessels. And this is, has been proven. So one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then um, lemon juice. Carmina talked about the benefits of lemons. It's also an antioxidant. Um, antioxidants, they go in and they um, look for free radicals. They just go in and they gobble up the free radicals. So two tablespoons of lemon juice. Just a little bit of salt. And I have the same salt that Carmina used. go with um, one teaspoon because the nacho chips are pretty salty. The recipe calls for one teaspoon, one and a half to one and a fourth, but I'm just going to go with one teaspoon. And um, pimentos. Now, if you don't like pimentos, you don't have to put them into this recipe. You can have it either way, either or. But I love um, the pimentos. So, just one container of that. And now, the secret ingredient to give this the cheesy taste is something called nutritional yeast. Have you ever heard of nutritional yeast? I love it. I put it on just about everything. It's full of B vitamins, B12, B6, niacin, and those are really um, excellent for brain health. A lot of individuals that are depressed, they're low in B12, they're low in folate, they're low in all of the B vitamins. In fact, when we're under a lot of stress, it depletes our B vitamins. And so we really need that in order to have a well-functioning functioning, um, brain for the nervous system. The recipe calls for a half a cup of nutritional yeast. Now, a lot of people say, you know, yeast. Why would I want to eat yeast? It's not the same thing as like brule sheets. Brule sheets, brule sheets. You know what I'm saying, right? I can't get that word out. Um, but this has a nice cheesy taste. I put it on popcorn, you can put it on spaghetti, um, you can put it on just about anything that you would like to have a cheesy taste. Okay, so let's just um, blend this and then I'll ask the ladies to 
bring out the samples. And then I want you to let me know if you think it tastes like cheese, okay? Blend it for just about a minute, minute and a half. A lot of people have are, you know, lacto intolerance. 
So um, I would advocate moving away from that and you know incorporating something like this. But would it still lose the effectiveness if I still ate with like real cheese? You want to put it on top of real cheese? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would want to do that, but um, you're defeating the purpose. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, you know, in the replacement of cheese, because cheese, you know, it's very, um, uh, it clogs our arteries, you know, and, and it's, it has a lot of, um, you know, hormones and all those things that are really bad for our body. So it's nice to be able to create something that is a great um, substitute for it, but in, and on top of that, it's also healthy for us, you know. I know what you're saying, but, you know, I know exactly what you're saying. So, so, okay. so our next um, program will be June the 6th, and on that date, we will be talking about having the blues. Having the blues. Exercise and sunlight can help. Exercise and sunlight can help. So, how many of you sometimes feel down in the dumps, feel like you have the blues? Anybody? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of hands. I'm seeing a lot of hands out there. So we have something that can help kick those blues. And it's getting out in the sunshine and getting some exercise. And we have a lot of research that shows that exercise can be is just as beneficial as taking the antidepressant. So we uh, want you to come back for that. It will be at the same location at the same time. And please bring the friend. Yes. Okay. And thank you for coming. And thank there's you. extras in the back. If you want to try a little bit more of the samples or, or take some home, please do so. Thank you very much.